a warship just blinked into the spotlight. And it's not a US carrier or Russian cruiser. It's China's freshly upgraded Type 052D destroyer. This isn't a prototype, a concept, or a PR stunt. It's real, operational, and already running combat drills. With a next-gen rotating ESA radar system that can sniff out stealth aircraft and drones before they even know they've even seen, this destroyer just signaled a major shift in naval warfare. Today, we're diving into what makes this ship so special, how it's already redefining tactical dominance, and why this upgrade sends a message far louder than missiles ever could. The heart of China S upgraded Type 052D destroyer isn't see its missiles or hull, it is the radar. The warship known as the Wynan has replaced the traditional spherical radar dome with a dual face rotating active electronically scanned array, AESL radar. A move that's less about aesthetics and more about absolute dominance in the electromagnetic spectrum. This radar system, similar to what's found on the new Type 054D frigate, gives the ship vastly improved situational awareness. AESA radars aren't new globally, but this particular implementation is critical. While the US Navy's Aegis system remains the benchmark, China's adoption of a dual face rotating AESA radar offers continuous 360 degree traffic. It rotates physically, but because it's electronically scanned, it doesn't T need to wait for a full spin to track targets, giving it both range and refresh speed advantages. This tech gives the Type 052D the capability to detect low RCS targets like stealth drones, sea skimming missiles, or even fifth generation fighter aircraft, all of which are designed to evade traditional radar. The choice of a rotating system versus a fixed multi panel layout, like on US Arleigh Burke class destroyers, shows China S intent to strike a balance between cost, flexibility, and performance. A dual-face rotating radar is easier to maintain and less power-hungry, yet still offers full coverage and precise tracking. That matters when you're mass-producing these platforms. But the upgrades aren't just skin-deep. The aft mast now supports a dedicated long-range radar array, giving the ship early warning capabilities against aerial and missile threats. This layered sensor setup allows the ship to act as a radar node within a fleet, passing target data to other ships in real time. The Wynan also received enhancements to its combat management system, enabling faster decision loops. Pair that with an expanded vertical launch system, VLS, now capable of launching a mix of HHQ-9 surface-to-air missiles, YJ-18 anti-ship cruise missiles, and CJ-10 land attack variants, and you get a warship that can engage threats from multiple domains without needing to reconfigure its loadout. Then there's the helicopter deck, which has been widened to support a broader range of aircraft, including Z-20 and Z-9 helicopters, both used in anti-submarine and search and rescue roles. This turns the destroyer into a mobile operations hub for extended missions far beyond China's coastline. In short, this isn't just a radar upgrade, it's a full-spectrum leap in offensive and defensive capability. The Wynan is no longer just another destroyer, it's a floating, multi-domain combat node. Cutting-edge technology is great on paper, but what happens when you fire it up in combat simulations? China didn't leave that question unanswered. The Wynan and its sister destroyer Yulin were immediately pushed into high-pressure naval exercises under the PLA Southern Theater Command, a region that oversees the contested South China Sea. The drills were not symbolic shows of force, they were formation-level simulations meant to test everything from radar tracking to command chain efficiency under live fire conditions. Here's what happened. The exercise simulated multi-vector attacks including unmanned surface vessels, aerial threats, and hypothetical coastal installations. The upgraded radar aboard the Wynan was the first to detect the approach of low signature drones. This is important. Radars don't just detect, they decide. In high-stakes combat, milliseconds matter. The dual-face ASA system quickly identified, tracked, and relayed data back to the ship's fire control system, which then guided the main gun systems to neutralize the threats, all without any external cue. But this wasn't just about acting alone. One of the most impressive aspects of the drill was intership data sharing. The Wynan launched shipborne drones, which scouted coastal targets and sent coordinates back to the command center. Using that intel, the destroyer served as a fire control relay for the rest of the fleet. This wasn't just detection, it was full battlefield orchestration. This real-time drone coordination allowed multiple ships to simultaneously launch strikes on enemy positions, 
demonstrating how the upgraded Azero 52D can act as a central node in networked naval warfare. Essentially, it turns every nearby platform into an extension of its own sensors and weapons. That's not futuristic. It's happening now. Then came command stress testing. Officers aboard the YNN were tasked with split-second decisions forced to handle information overload and prioritize threats autonomously. Chinese state media made it clear this was not just hardware testing, but command capability benchmarks. The destroyer's upgraded AI-assisted systems provided decision support, but ultimate judgment remained human, testing whether China's modern commanders are as fast as their ships. Another significant demonstration was shore-based threat engagement. Using drone-targeted coordinates, the YNN led precision strikes on simulated coastal installations, validating its extended range weaponry and multi-role mission capacity. This confirms that the upgraded destroyer can be a decisive player in amphibious operations and coastal denial missions. What these drills reveal is profound. The Type 052D isn't just better. It's combat-ready, agile, and intelligent in ways that many Western destroyers are still aspiring to match. It's not being tested, it's being deployed. If you're wondering why China is investing so heavily in a single class of warship, here is the answer. The Type 052D is the cornerstone of a scalable naval doctrine that China is executing with precision. Unlike Western nations, which often pursue expensive, highly specialized ships, China is building cost-efficient, multi-role platforms that can be upgraded over time and deployed en masse. That's exactly what the upgraded Type 052D represents. Not just a more capable destroyer, but a smarter strategy. Instead of scrapping older ships for newer designs, China is layering innovation onto proven hulls. The result? Rapid deployment of modern capabilities without the delays of starting from scratch. This approach is tailored for China's specific ambitions in the Indo-Pacific theater. The South China Sea is crowded, contested, and increasingly militarized. With overlapping claims involving Vietnam, the Philippines, and Malaysia, not to mention U.S. Navy freedom of navigation operations, Beijing needs tools that can scale fast and hold ground. The upgraded 052D fits perfectly into this tactical environment. Its moderate displacement and versatile arsenal make it suitable for both blue water operations, escorting aircraft carriers or hunting submarines, and for coastal missions like blockades or amphibious assaults. With one hull form, China gets multiple roles, cutting down training times, logistics overhead, and production complexity. Mass production also plays a role here. Over 25 Type 052Ds have already been commissioned, and upgrades like those seen on the Wainan can be retrofitted, extending the lifespan of earlier vessels and ensuring operational parity across the fleet. No Western power is producing multi-role destroyers at this scale and speed. Not even the U.S. Navy, which faces cost overruns and schedule delays on newer platforms like the Zumwalt. Even more crucial is fleet interoperability. The 052D can seamlessly integrate with China's growing fleet of carriers like the Fujian, frigates, amphibious assault ships, and even underwater assets. In a hypothetical conflict, the 052D would be the bridge between high-value targets and the broader kill chain offering sensor coverage, strike coordination, and tactical defense. This destroyer isn't the future, it's the now. And with each new upgrade, China sends a message. We're not experimenting, we're implementing. The upgraded Type 052D destroyer is indeed just a better version of an existing warship, the ES, a stable. It's China showing the world that it can innovate fast, deploy faster, and coordinate like a modern sea power. With its next-gen ASA radar, AI-supported combat systems, networked drone capabilities, and a modular weapon platform, the Wainan is no one-trick pony. It's a blueprint, a scalable, flexible node in a rapidly modernizing navy that's no longer just playing catch-up with the US or Japan, but carving out its own vision of maritime dominance. This matters because the way wars are fought at sea is changing. It's no longer about who has the biggest ship, it's about who has the smartest, fastest, and most integrated fleet. China knows this, and with the upgraded Type Z052 d it S made one thing clear. The future of naval warfare will be shaped not in giant shipyards alone, but in code coordination and combat-ready adaptability. The Wainan isn't the end of the trend, it's the beginning of